All right, so you just heard Wonder I'll Stay by Faris and Jason Romero from Canada, the west coast of Canada, and they are here with me via Skype today. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. Hi. So tell me a little bit about A Wonder I'll Stay. Well, it's our, our third record as a duo. Um, just came out at the start of March, and, and we're, really, we're really proud of this record. We, we've approached this one, you know, with the same solid sense of singing as a duet and, and playing as a duet um, and writing songs that are inspired by, you know, the, our, our world around us, the characters that live near us, and uh, the interesting things that happen to the people who live near us but also by our absolute fascination with old music, which informs a lot of the music that we, we do play. Uh, we love old 78s. We love old scratchy records. We love bluegrass from the 40s. We love weird country from the 60s. Anything we can get our hands on um, a lot of the time, and often the weirder the better. Um, and we're, we're very lucky to have a pretty extensive collection of that stuff. So we do a lot of listening, and... So all that came together in, in this new record, A Wanderer I'll Stay, um, in a way that we're really happy about. I totally agree. <laughs> I've, I'm not saying I'm not a fan of your first two records, but this is definitely a step up. I think a lot of other critics have agreed. That has that has been um, yeah that has been the resounding message uh, that we've been getting anyways and which is really interesting to us because it's along the same vein of our other two records but this one happened in a different sort of time frame than the other two we we had a little girl in October of 2013 and between having a baby and being on the road and running our banjo making business we're finding our time becomes more and more limited. And so our time to actually create music together and to write songs becomes more and more limited. So we're doing different things with the time that we do have, and I think that really reflects in the record. Um, the other thing about it is that we recorded it at Home and Horsefly, in the same place that we play music in, in the same place that we play and make banjos in. That was where we did this whole recording, and I think that just gave the record a really cohesive, solid comfortable at ease sense that we hadn't been able to experience before with having to leave our home and go out into studios. You're definitely using the key words that I would use to describe it. Comfortable, at ease, just it's something different, I think, that comes from the West Coast music scene. Because <laughs> a lot of the folk on the East Coast music scene, it's a little more, a little more edgy than... Okay than what I've come to expect out of the West. And uh, I don't know. I can't say I prefer one or the other. I'm definitely more familiar with the artists who are closer by. But it's it's very relaxing, this album. I'd say, I've obviously, A Wonder I'll Stay, the title track, Ballad of Old Bill, those are some of the originals you've wrote. Yep, most of the album is originals. Um, I think uh, a few reviewers out there have got their wires crossed a bit because some folks have thought that it's almost all traditionals or public domain or covers, and it's actually almost all original songs. <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound that way, which is the highest compliment I can give someone being a huge fan of traditional music. Right on, yeah, thank you. Thanks, and uh, I actually got a wonderful surprise. I was expecting it to come out last week. But a couple Fridays ago, it showed up early on Folk Alley's first listen. It did, yep. What does it mean to get that kind of boost from one of the leading folk stations in America? Well, being that we don't spend a lot of time on the road and, and out there sharing our music firsthand with folks, um, it means a great deal to, to get that kind of coverage um, because we're really trying to kind of cast a wide net as we can with our music without maybe having to, having to go there because our home life is uh, fairly demanding, uh, you know, with the babe and, and the banjo business uh, side of things. So it, it, it meant everything to, to get something like that. It's, um, you know, we're all folk musicians are out there working hard trying to get folks to hear their music. And, and when you get a lucky break like that, it, uh, it can really help things out. 
I think it was a little more than luck. They tend to pick out the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, we feel very honored to be involved yeah. uh, with those folks. They've been really good to us. Yeah, they have. And uh, the banjo business and the baby have been keeping you at home. I, I wish that people like you would come by the East Coast more often. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> we love the East Coast, and every time we've been out there playing, we've just had an amazing time. It's, how would you say, it's very different than the West Coast because there's a lot more venues quite close to each other. You know, yeah. where we are, we don't think much about driving five, six, seven, eight hours in between shows. Um, so it's a different style of touring that we really enjoyed being out on the East. <laughs> so we hope to be able to come out and do it again soon. Uh, maybe when the kid's a little older. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. I think so. I think so. We've we've had her on the road since she was three months old, and she's really she's literally she's visited all over North America, New York City to Dawson City, way up in in Canada's almost the Arctic, and we were just on tour for a month in the UK with her, and she's quite a road dog at this point. Wow, I, I could never imagine when I was younger. I was a nightmare in the car. I could never imagine being behaved on the road <laughs> yeah it's definitely not a nightmare it's um it's definitely tiring though we won't we won't kid you there being on the road is is as every musician um knows is tiring and you throw in a 16 month old and with the nanny and uh, driving in between it's um you gotta take care of yourself now the banjo business has just been strong for you guys from what i can see the orders are already filled for 2015 2019, actually. 2019. Well, just that we have about four years worth of orders right now. So um, yeah, we did. You you were correct. We opened up our our, our wait list uh, on January of 2015, January 1st, and it was uh, that year's uh, orders were um, filled up, which is 25 um, by about the third of the fourth of January. So. And those folks won't get their banjos until 2019. It's kind of crazy. Wow, I'm I've seen a few notable names who I listen to a lot who are actually playing your banjos. My favorite probably is Dirk Powell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's great. Amazing. Most of, you know, we have a few great well-known players that have our banjos, but for the most part, it's just, you know, lovers of banjo out, out in the world who um, just want to get a really good banjo. And we hope we, uh, we, that's what we do is just make really good banjos. What do you feel when, someone else is creating with something that you made? Like, do you feel more a part of that record? Um, well, yeah, of course, because I've given my all, you know, when I made that instrument and then to hear it being used and loved and and, uh, and played and, uh, and recorded, um, of course, I feel uh, a bit of pride and, uh, uh, um, of course, happiness. I mean, just we're very lucky to get to make Make banjos for a living, I, you know, it doesn't really make sense um, to even hear myself say that. But um, yeah, we just, we're very lucky. Every, every once in a while, we get a package in the mail from Ricky Skaggs with one of his new records because we made a banjo for him and he uses that banjo on most of the records that we made for him. And it's just, it's really, it's a huge thrill to hear a beautifully made recording with a great player like Ricky playing, playing a banjo that we made. Yeah. It's just awesome. We're going to take a short break here. We're going to play a song off the new album. It's a cover. It's called Cocaine Blues, and we'll be back in a second to talk about that. <laughs> 